if you're going to talk about or refer to the man, get it right. You. Hello, everyone. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to a special Monday issue of the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. Number, we're, this is number 210. This is the one about it's Sifu Dan and Asano. You. As you're logging in, if you'd be kind enough to say where you're logging in from, hit the like button and feel free to continue doing so throughout the broadcast. If you're catching the simulcast over on the YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Uh, if you enjoy my work and you'd like to support the program, please visit um, jkdrebel.com, click on the Rebel Gear link, and that's where you'll see stuff like this. The uh, four tenets of Jeet Kune Do t-shirt, long sleeve, short sleeve, hoodie, um, coffee mug, all that good stuff. Okay, so this is not going to be um, surprising to anyone. Uh, everybody pretty much knows where this comes from. It's a post by um, Kevin Myers, a member of the I Love Jeet Kune Do Facebook group. And... Um, I have it here. I'll read it to you. It'll take me a, a, little, uh, a few minutes to read this, but it's important. And then you guys can verify all this. You can look it up on your own. Uh, what Kevin said was, I've noticed over the last year more than a few here who have, in so many words, knocked, insulted, and all but dismissed the teachings of JKD by Sifu Nasano as being not really what Lee was teaching and or not true JKD and what JKD is. For those of you who have done so, please read and think about the following post and quote from Sifu Andy Kimura. Give me one second here. I forgot to heads up. Okay. So Sifu Andy, Andy writes, um, my father said this about Sifu and Asano. Dan knows more about martial arts than any person on the planet. I was witness to countless conversations between Sifu and Asano and my father. So, so this is now Andy saying that he was witness to uh, conversations between Sifu Dan and um, Sigong Taki in regard to JKD. Believe me when I tell you that if anyone on this planet understands what C. Joe Lee's art was about, it was those two men. Regardless of how you feel about anything in regards to Jun Fan Gung Fu or JKD, you owe Sifu and Asano respect as he is your senior. Sijo Lee would not tolerate any disrespect or insubordination. Sifu Inasano was Bruce's close friend and he trusted him to run his school and teach classes for him. Remember, when you give your opinion or cast judgment on this man while standing on his shoulders, you are a fool. And of course, after posting that, the comments started in. And of course, my good friend and JKD colleague, Mr. Richard Torres weighed in uh, on the comments. And that's what started everything. I, I, found, I found um not just Richard's, but a, a lot of the other comments to be very revealing. Um, and I would say revealing of stuff which we already knew, but also revealing of some new stuff, so to speak. So I'm not gonna spend all night going through the entire thing chronologically. When I when I first looked at it i think it had about 100 comments i think it's twice that now up to uh, probably about 200 comments or so so i'm just gonna go, go through it chronologically up until the point where i made my notes so richard says we can love dan but we also have to realize that he is not infallible so i commented it wasn't a reply to richard it was just a comment that if you can read you'll notice that the post is not at all about loving Dan and Asano, nor about thinking him infallible. Instead, the post is about speaking about him with respect and not being insubordinate when it comes to his position in the Jeet Kune Do world, especially relative to your own position or that of your instructor. So this is one of the new things. It hadn't really dawned on me before that. But Richard Torres tends to, refute, to refer to Dan and Asano always as simply Dan, never as Sifu and Asano, never as Dan and Asano. It's almost as if they are contemporaries and they are therefore on a first name basis. Now, 
I know that Richard has known Sifu and Asano for a long time. I have also known him for a long time, and I have never referred to him as Dan. I'm an old school Kung Fu guy. So if I don't use your title, I'll use your full name or I'll use your last name, but never just your first name alone. I dare anyone to find a post or a comment from me about Sifu Ted Wong, where I simply refer to him as Ted. I dare you to find that. I guarantee you, you will not find it. So think about that for a second. Now, there was a time period in the late 1960s, moving into the 70s, and even into the 80s, where in the JKD world, where things were, uh, uh, you know, anti-establishment, let's call it, and therefore somewhat casual and informal. And yes, people did use each other's first names in this martial arts setting. But Richard Torres was not part of the Los Angeles Chinatown Institute, nor was he a member of Inasano's backyard group. So when I heard Dan Lee, for example, refer to Sifu Inasano as Dan, made sense to me. If I were to hear Tim Tackett or Chris Ken or even the late great Del Pollard refer to Sifu Inasano as Dan, I get it because those guys are from that era. Those guys were there. They were Los Angeles people. Torres and I are not. So I'd never refer to Sifu Ted Wong as, oh, Ted. That's not, no, that's not my way. In any case, Richard's reply to me was now that just because someone points out a mistake or discrepancies taught as Jeet Kune Do, that does not mean that the person is being insubordinate or disrespectful towards the person who is teaching those mistakes or discrepancies. Sometimes people confuse a discussion of what was or is being taught as Jeet Kune Do as an attack on someone's character. They're both totally different. All right, so here's the thing, see? Imagine the size of the wheelbarrow that you need to cart around to think that you qualify to opine on Dan and Asano's approach to anything, that you qualify to refer to Dan and Asano's teachings as mistakes or discrepancies. Imagine the size of your wheelbarrow. So what are these mistakes or discrepancies to which he refers? One of them, is that Sifuan Asano changed Jeet Kune Do. He changed Bruce Lee's approach when he started teaching kicking, punching, trapping, and grappling as the four ranges of combat. Whereas Bruce Lee taught three ranges, long, middle, and close quarter. So right there, you see that there's a misunderstanding of the term ranges. Three ranges refers to combat distances. Four ranges of combat refers to skills that can be applied within the three ranges. So you can have long, middle, and close quarter kicking, punching, trapping, and grappling. That's what the four ranges are about. Now, what Richard Torres refuses to accept is that Inasano did not change anything. He did not make a mistake. This is not a discrepancy in Jeet Kune Do teaching because the four ranges was never set up to replace the three ranges. It, there was never an argument between the two. Dan and Asano never said, hey, I'm changing Bruce Lee's approach. I'm changing Jeet Kune Do, and it's not the three ranges of combat. It's the four ranges of combat. Bruce Lee was wrong. Bruce Lee made a mistake. No, it was never that. So for him to now characterize Inasano's teachings as mistakes or discrepancies, I want to see the size of the wheelbarrow. So, four ranges of combat was and still is meant to convey the idea that at certain distances, aka ranges, kicking might be more appropriate than punching or trapping or grappling. In other words, 
at a particular range, kicking makes sense. Hence, kicking range. That's all it was. An idea to ex express a concept or a concept to ex express an idea. Take it however you want. Not a mistake and certainly not an attempt to move away, an attempt by Dan and Asano to move away from his instructor's teachings and set himself up as somebody who got who who knew perhaps even better than Bruce Lee what combat was about. This ties into another one of Richard's uh, favorite canards, the famous Inasano JKD blend. Um, I, I I don't have the thing. I'll, I'll maybe I'll put it up uh, in post production or something. But you can see it if you if you take the time. To scroll through all the comments, you can find um, uh, 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 um, a rendition of it. And I think it, it screen captures from a video um, if, that was shot, uh, I think it's a Walt Missingham video that was shot in uh, maybe the, the, the mid 80s or so down in, uh, in Australia. And um, what it shows, so Richard purports that it proves that Inasano was adding styles to Jeet Kune Do and calling all of that cross training in other styles, Jeet Kune Do. So would it, you know what, bear with me for a second, because I think I can, I can put it up on screen. Um, I can put it up on screen for you because I want you to, I want you to see what, um, what we're talking about. All right. So excuse the, um, excuse the slowdown here. Um, uh no okay all right here we go let me put this up um on screen for you okay there we go right so what what richard purports that this shows is that inasana was adding styles to jeet Kune Do because it shows a chasse right yeah you know what's and you know what's funny you know what? This is really interesting, right? Now, people don't even take the time to complain correctly, right? Everybody calls it sachet, sachet, sachet. Now, I've been with Dan and the Center for almost 40 years. I kind of know how his mind works. So, for example, he has a, he, he has a, a well-known uh, student, uh, a, a jazz percussionist named uh, Alex Acuna. Uh, uh, Acuna. And he calls him Alex Kahuna. Why? Because Inasano was born in 1936. Kahuna is a Hawaiian term with which he's very familiar. So he sometimes ca doesn't call him Alex Acuna. He calls him Alex Kahuna because they, they sound alike. Sachet is a word in English that all of us know. Chasse, which is a French word, we are not as familiar with. So a lot of people, um, follow Sifu Dan in in his miswording, right? And call and calls it um, and calls it uh, uh, um, sachet. The real word is chasse. But my point is this: people are so dumb that they complain and they don't even realize that they're complaining about something that is inaccurate. They don't even take the time, right, to make sure that that the quality of their complaint is something where you correct that which was uh, which was um, mistaken. And then you start to complain. Anyhow, that's just an aside, right? So this is supposed to show that Inasano added savat because the kick is is um, the chasse lateral. Then he added the uh, a punch. Then he added a trap from Wing Chun, and then he added a lock and a takedown from Jiu Jitsu. So apparently, what this is, right, is um, an attempt to show that. In the Santa was adding styles. Here's the ridiculous problem with that. In the Santa never said, right? Hey world, look now under my leadership, Jeet Kune Do has become a blend of savat, boxing, Wing Chun, and Jiu Jitsu. And you want to know why Dan and Asano could never have said that? Because he would have left out the Muay Thai and the Pentjak Silat, for which he is also well known. So there is no way, if he was teaching, 
that Jeet Kune Do is now a blend of styles. It is now a form of mixed martial arts, let's call it. There is no way that he would have left out Penjak Silat and Muay Thai. So it's inaccurate to have the opinion that Inasano is now teaching a specific thing called the Jeet Kune Do blend. Instead, in fact, I wonder this, what if Dan Inasano had just shown kick, punch, trap, lock, takedown, without naming anything? I wonder if Richard would have had a problem over all these years, because we're talking, I think we're talking 30 something years now. I wonder if he would have had a problem with all that if there had been no names attached to the techniques, just kick, punch, trap, grapple. I say that because if you're not familiar, see, because Larry Hartzell, if I have my facts right, Larry Hartzell was in Australia at the time that this video was made. And Larry Hartzell had just put out his book, Enter to Trap to Grapple. So I'm thinking that this particular video sequence is just an illustration, kind of a, a, a to help promote Sifu Larry's book. That's my opinion. I, I can't swear that that's what's going on, but it kind of makes sense to me because in that particular instance, let's say Missingham says to Inasano, well, well, we gotta shoot a video and whatever, whatever. If, if what's going on, let's say behind the scenes is promote Larry's book, if, if if uh, Sifu Hartzell was even there because it was part of a tour and he was um, it was being highlighted in the grappling or whatever. Dan and Asano would go ahead and show a sequence like this that ends up in grappling that shows a, 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 a possible illustration of how a fight could progress and that techniques could come from anywhere. But now, here's the thing. Loyal to a fall. Sifu Inasano likes to give credit to things and places and people. So naming the arts was just that, right? It was just being loyal and, um, and, and showing where things came from. I think I froze. Okay, I think I froze. So anyhow, so this is what I'm saying, right? Um, that Sifu Inosano was just naming stuff in order to give credit where credit was due. Um, but the, don't lose, don't lose the, the major message behind it, which is to illustrate that a useful kick, a useful punch, or a lock could come from any art. And that through training, a student could seamlessly put offensive and or counter offensive techniques to use. That's it. Now, this, of course, touches on the idea that I mentioned before, that Dan Inasano and his students advocate that Jeet Kune Do is somehow some kind of an, an MMA, right? It, it's, it's MMA like because of an emphasis on cross training. It, this is so ridiculous. I shouldn't even have to comment on it, but I will. It is possible to be dedicated to one thing and still have an active interest and indeed an active participation in a variant of that one thing. So for example, I once knew a guy whose formal job was playing trombone. That was his formal job. In another informal setting, actually in another band, guess what? He was the bass player. And because he was such a musical badass, he played drums as well. It's possible. So one last point about Richard Torres. He claims very often that he is just making sure that Jeet Kune Do history is not rewritten. Well, as far as I know, he's never been appointed by anyone as Jeet Kune Do's official historian. So I don't understand why he thinks that it falls upon him to declare that his difference of opinion, that his way of thinking is to be taken 
as, as a, 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 a serious rewriting of Jeet Kune Do history. But I'll give you an example of how you can attempt to rewrite Jeet Kune Do history. You can say that it is Ted Wong who appears at the 1967 Long Beach Internationals in that sparring demonstration with Bruce Lee. That's one way you could attempt to rewrite uh, Jeet Kune Do history. Another way that you could attempt to rewrite Jeet Kune Do history is that in quoting Ted Wong, Ted Wong talking about Dan and Asano as a Jeet Kune Do instructor, you eliminate the word Jeet Kune Do when Ted Wong makes a reference to Dan and Asano's students. And so it reads, Dan's students, not Dan's Jeet Kune Do students. You see, given it, uh, uh, by, by twisting that, you give it an implication that somehow perhaps Ted Wong did not think that Dan and Asano was a Jeet Kune Do uh, instructor. And so he did not have Jeet Kune Do students. That's an attempt, perhaps, perhaps, because I can't swear to it, right? That's an attempt to rewrite Jeet Kune Do history. One last thing. Um, there, 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 there's a guy, I don't know him very well, uh, Tyler Creason, but he quipped about Dan and Asano was making Bruce Lee money. And then Richard kind of corrected him by saying, actually, Bruce Lee was paying Dan and Asano to teach for him at the LA school. Now, I can't speak for Tyler Creason, but it seems as if when Richard said, Bruce Lee was paying Inasano that Tyler realized, oh, so Inasano was not making money for Bruce Lee. He was costing Bruce Lee money. Now, but here's something I do know about Tyler Creason. He intends to open up a school sometime uh, shortly, I believe. He should get used, this is my opinion, he should get used to the idea of this. When you work for someone, more often than not, they pay you. And isn't it interesting that Bruce Lee, perhaps even in a time when money was tight, thought enough and thought highly enough of Dan and Asano to pay him to run classes at the Chinatown School. Think on that one, right? So this is the last, last thing. Richard asserts that Bruce Lee never encouraged his students to look at any other martial arts styles, because he wrote that instead he, he sought to free his comrades from adherence, right, from bondage to any type of style or system. But how do we know that Bruce Lee did not advocate training in or looking at other arts in order to come to an understanding of them, in order to come to an understanding of how to use them, how to use what you found useful in those things? but more importantly, how to counter them. Here's what we do know. Bruce Lee certainly made a lot of notes on lots of different arts, don't we? Okay, so I'm gonna make something clear here and now. I just spent 23 minutes talking about Richard Torres. This is not to be interpreted as my having any animus towards him. I respect him greatly for his dedication to Bruce Lee and to Jeet Kune Do, but that does not stop me from disagreeing with him vehemently when it comes to Dan and Asano, nor from thinking that he is quite stubborn when it comes to Dan and Asano. Richard has a standing open invitation to come on the Jeet Kune Do dialogues anytime that he wants to refute any of my um, assertions, to discuss these matters or any of them, any of the matters in Jeet Kune Do. A standing open invitation to come on the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues and talk with me so that I cannot be accused of being one-sided or closed-minded. All right, that's it. I don't necessarily need anybody to comment on this, but I will shut up now, close up, and go read what everybody had to say. All right, so. Um, Okay, that's it. I'm done, right? I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Take care.